All right, the Reds, it's the preview show. Liverpool v Manchester City, the big one this weekend on Sunday. Um, a little bit different with the preview show this week in that we were going to do a, a second look show about Napoli v Liverpool. But what we're going to do instead is do a part about Napoli v Liverpool with Neil and Kofi, a part later on about Liverpool v Manchester City. And don't worry, Neil's still going to do his tactics as well. Um, we're trying to, what we're trying to do, obviously, when we look back at the show, when we're all sort of calm down now and all that kind of thing, is not repeat stuff that we already know. So we already know the keeper played well. Yep. We already know Gomez played well. Yep. Van Dijk played pretty well. Beyond that, though, a lot of things that are quite worrying, really, and, and you can see people talking on social media and forums and everything about how they are worried. Yep. Um, how how quickly were you worried? Because I think you know you've got to reference the Naby Keita injury, haven't you? You know, nineteen minutes, all of a sudden he's gone, Henderson's in, and that's not what the manager planned. I wasn't worried. I was worried about from about sixty onwards. From about sixty onwards, I thought we were going to lose the game. I actually, when we we had a little bit of a flurry, I think around seventy five. And what was in my head was it'd be great to score here because it gives us a buffer. Because that was all I was thinking, you know. And I think that that's why I think this is a really hard game for the manager, for the team, and I think it's the first game they've had of this type. They haven't really had a game in the first half of the season where they've come off a massive game, they've got a massive game to come against a good opposition where a point's all right. And I think all the way through, Liverpool can't quite pitch the performance. Mm. And I think that you see the first half, and the first half's a dog of a first half, and I don't think either side play well. And I think that two things happen in, in the two separate dressing rooms. One is Ancelotti says, and sets a team up to say, we can win this. And I think that there's something in the Liverpool dressing room. I'm not going to say Liverpool was saying we can't win this. I just think that a mindset sets in of, of how do we just get through this? And I think that Liverpool haven't played a European game away from home with a how do we just get through this mentality. This decade, to be honest with you, this is the first game of its type this decade. We haven't been in the business end of a league season and in a tough European game simultaneously. We, 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 last year's run, we could almost park the league games. You know, to get there in the first half of the season, it, what the, the group games themselves weren't that tough. So I think this is a bit of a unique challenge, and I think that that's why you see a bit of a mishmash Liverpool performance added to the underlying issues that we might well have at the minute. I think there's probably something in that as well, and I'm backed up a little bit by the by the stats, Kobe, because you know Napoli dominate possession, fifty-seven to forty-three. Mm -hmm. uh, even in terms of tackles and fouls, like if you're the team that's sort of on the back foot a little bit then maybe that should be higher, and yet Napoli dominate those figures as well. Um, pass accuracy as well, Napoli are better at that. And, and you know Liverpool's figures for pass accuracy were down from 84% against Chelsea last weekend, only 80% against Napoli, and they have, Liverpool had 53% possession at Stamford Bridge as well, so almost like everything got turned on its head a little bit. Um, again, for you, is it worrying, or is it like Neil's talking about, it's the context of this particular game? I think there's a bit. I think it's a bit of both, to be honest. Because whether you're an optimist or a pessimist depends on how you've looked at the games already this season. We've generally. I was thinking about this the other day. We've generally been saying, I would get class us as optimists when it comes to footy, that we've been winning despite playing well, and that's a good sign. But that assumes that you will then start playing well, and then you'll win and play well. But the pessimists amongst the fan base, who I've seen this a lot as well would say, well, just because you're playing poorly and winning doesn't mean that it's the playing poorly which will change. If you continue to play poorly and you come, create, you come across a stronger challenge, a kryptonite type thing, then the playing poorly will just mean you start losing. So that's the concerning part for me, is that, is that there could be an element of that. But on the other side of that, I think I agree completely with Neil about the, the context of the game. But I also think the opponent is not something we'll come across very often. We talked last, last year quite a bit on the review about the problem that other teams in the league and lots of other teams across Europe actually have when playing a side like us or Man City is that very few other teams play as we do to that level. So they don't get to practice playing against it. What Napoli did was really interesting because they combined sort of the alehouse snidey side of football with incredibly talented footballers. Mm. And it's what Mourinho has done brilliantly for a long time now. And that's really difficult to deal with because yeah. it's two problems that are done very well. And how do you defeat it? It's, I mean, we'll talk about the City game the, later on with the other lads, but Guardiola openly on the documentary that he's doing admits to having a problem with playing Klopp teams. He yeah. just, he, he, it's, a, it's a puzzle he struggles with. And I think with that type of performance from Napoli, especially we chatted off air about 
the referee didn't do any, didn't do us any favours. They were putting in a lot of really aggressive challenges and combining that with being a really good team. Interestingly as well, I, I expected Klopp to make reference to the pitch and the conditions. And as far as I've seen, that hasn't happened didn't yet. really, no. So there may be an element of, we'll just take our medicine in public, but behind the scenes, we're saying to each other, there were loads of factors involved in that. Don't worry about it. We just mm. go on now. We know what the Man City game is. We've done that loads of times before. That we'll just put this one in the bank down to experience and think about it next time. Yeah, there's a comment where he's basically said they deserve to lose. Um, but I think the comments that I found interesting, Neil, and I'm interested to hear what you've got to say on it, is that if you look at Keita, only on the pitch 19 minutes, but he only makes seven passes and he loses possession five times, which doesn't look great, obviously. But then Klopp says afterwards, and well, Henderson as well, just, to, just before I tell you what Klopp said, Henderson as well comes on, looks really bold, chest out, being all positive, played a couple of nice balls, commentator on the on the TV was all really positive about him, and then very soon after you were a bit like, now where's he gone? Um, and, and actually Klopp says afterwards, the job of the midfield three was nearly impossible. Now that's the manager saying that. But why was the job of the midfield three nearly impossible? I'd love to see a stat. There was a stat at the weekend that came out about the number of sprints Manchester, Manchester United did against West Ham. And I'd love to see Liverpool's one for this. And I, I was looking for it both last night and this morning because I think I think part of the issue, and I think that the Henderson coming on thing is is interesting in this context. Henderson comes on with a ton of intensity mm. and then he looks around and no one else is showing that intensity. Yeah. And I think there's a thing there which is, so you can either keep showing that intensity, but you've got to maybe think, well, if I'm doing this, I pull the shape out. And we're not doing this here. For whatever reason, we're not doing this. And I think that the job of the midfield three was difficult because they couldn't ratchet up the intensity because it wasn't getting shown everywhere else. So I think they're in a situation where they can try and force that issue. But if they force it and they leave gaps, we'll get punished. Uh, and if they force it and there's not, that, that, that's not getting shown elsewhere. And I think that's what might be what he means when he says that, that they can't be everywhere. So they've got to decide just to be where they are. And that's it. And that's what they're left with. And so they're left with a huge amount of pitch. And that pitch looked enormous last night. And you've got to be careful on television, but it looked enormous to me. Mm. And I think that the left in those conditions, with the, the it's teeming with rain, the pitch is cutting up underneath them, and they're looking everywhere. And if no one else is quite where they should be and quite doing what they should be doing, then it gets harder and harder. I mean, I think Alexander-Arnold gives it away 17 times across the course of the game. So if, again, if you're in the midfield three, but your right back's giving it away 17 times in 90 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, that just to put that in context, if the ball's in play for 60 minutes, that's not shy of once every three minutes he's giving it away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, you've then got to get it back. You've then got to go and do your job. And I think that that's what he's trying to say. I think that that might be what he's trying to put out there. I don't think it's clear or obvious exactly what that is, but I think that that, that, that could be what he means. And as I said, I'd just love to know how many sprints Liverpool all, as a whole actually produced across the 90 minutes. They produced 129 against Chelsea at the weekends, and I just wonder, I suspect that number is well down. Well, Neil's going to look at um, more tactics around what happened against Napoli and also looking forward to Manchester City at the weekend. Liverpool were beaten by Napoli, and for the first time, they were beaten. We've had them to the second best side on the pitch, and that hasn't happened this season that often. Certainly not with the result going against Liverpool as well. There's been times where Liverpool haven't quite hit the straps, but nothing quite like what we saw. There was a couple of things that I thought were really tactically interesting. One was that Napoli pushed right the way up on this side of the pitch around Alexander-Arnold with and without the ball. Yes, the goal in the end comes from the other side, but Mertens hitting the bar comes from before then. Quality players, quality footballers make a difference when they work hard and do sensible things. And you saw that from this Napoli side, really well set up by Carlo Ancelotti. And they came out second half with a really clear plan. Throughout the game, though, what they did really well was stop Liverpool's fullbacks from getting playing and becoming part of the wider game. And I think they did it by cutting off passing lanes, by being in the places where Liverpool didn't want them to be. And by making them say, if you want to shift this ball, you're going to have to do more than you would normally do. And right the way around there, you saw Alexander-Arnold give it away more than I've seen him give it away in a Liverpool shirt. I would give Alexander-Arnold the benefit of the doubt. He came up against a very well-drilled, sensible unit. This is interesting. I think that for a long time, we've talked about other people getting at Liverpool's fullbacks. And whilst Napoli did do that, they did get at Liverpool's fullbacks. They also had a plan about what to do when Liverpool fullbacks have the ball. And I think they're not quite the first side to have that, but they're probably the first side with really good players to have that. When Paris Saint-Germain come to Anfield, one of the things that they were looking to do was to get Neymar in it and have Neymar turn Alexander-Arnold around and threaten Liverpool down this end of the pitch. 
You look at Napoli, no, no, no. They wanted to work the ball into these areas, but they didn't back one man to win that one-on-one -on -one battle. And they also had a plan to stop Alexander-Arnold pinging those little balls into midfield that get Liverpool playing on the half turn. Will Manchester City replicate this? I'm not so sure. I think it's difficult for Manchester City this weekend. Selection is one issue. Bernardo Silva can be expected to start next to David Silva in a central midfield three, which we'll pull together now. In there as well, Sane plays the way Sane plays. Sterling plays the way Sterling plays. And the centre forward's Aguero, and he does what he does. Yes, these footballers are flexible, but they're their own men. And I think that Manchester City are going to be left with a big decision to make Pep Guardiola. He may not have his first choice left back in Mendy. He may not have his second choice left back in Delph. He will may well have Zinchenko playing left back for him. And one of the things that that throws open is, does he just want to say, well, I've got Bernardo Silva alongside David Silva. I've got my front three as my front three. Let's just go for it. Let's just have the target of scoring three or four goals. And if we get done on the reverse, we go from there. That could be a wise move. Liverpool's front three haven't really been quite firing yet. And it wouldn't surprise me if there's an unlikely selection thrown in somewhere from Jurgen Klopp. It wouldn't surprise me if he jiggles them about. He plays Salah up top. We saw that in the Amazon documentary that Pep Guardiola had this concern about what happens when Salah goes top. I don't know. I'm, I think it's going to be a really strange game of football. And I'm not even as certain as I often am that it'll be a great game. I think there's every chance that it can become a little bit nip and tuck throughout this one, certainly in the first half. And I think Liverpool have got one other problem as well. You look at last season, the two home victories against Manchester City. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain breaking into this channel, carrying the ball forward, made a massive difference for Liverpool. He scores two goals, but what he also does, when he runs at you there, the back four don't know what to do. That's where these three come alive and they're at the best. And that's what they haven't had all season. I think the onus will be on Wijnaldum to play that role, to be the man who carries the ball, to be the footballer he was when he came on against Roma in that first half when we scored five goals uh, last season. I think that's what, what Klopp will ask Wijnaldum to do. Whether or not he can do it, we'll see. But that's where the game could well be won for Liverpool. And if they fail to do it, that could be where it's lost. Thanks to Neil then. And so what we've done here at our time in the show is uh, we've pulled off Neil and Cove, <laughs> as it were. And uh, we've got... Uh, Wait, can you say that all the time? <laughs> I am, I've just gone for it. Uh, we've, and we've got uh, Ian Ryan and Dan Morgan on as the substitutes and uh, they're going to talk exclusively now about Manchester City, about this game on Sunday. Um, you know the script, boys, both on 19 points, joint top, uh, ahead of Chelsea right now. Uh, loads of little bits about this and it's starting to ramp up today a little bit for me and I I've enjoyed it, not just in terms of football, but in terms of some of the other madness, like, you know, this stories out there about uh, they're going to go on a secret route to get to Anfield. <laughs> Um, Talk like, us through that secret know, route. Well, <laughs> exactly, there's not many options. There's two ways to go, basically, because like, because they're gonna, end, you know, there's either go past the Arkles or go past the Harry. And like it was, it was in one of the reports that I read before. It said, uh, and the plan on not going past the Arkles because of what la what happened last time. Go past the Harry then. So that's can't a wait, secret. Can't wait to see David Silver getting off the 17. <laughs> what, is it, look? What, 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 I, what I love about it, though, in all seriousness, is. Like, it's, it feels like we're in the Reds, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Before we've even kicked the ball, we're in the Reds. And they've obviously got this really poor record at Anfield. 15 years now since a Manchester City win. I remember it, it was um, an Elka two goals, the second and the 90th minute to win it. Um, I've actually got a thing, I mean, this might be a bit chaotic, but I thought this might be quite funny. So the teams last time they won at Anfield, and maybe I'm tempting fate, but fuck it. Um, Dudek, Hippier, Risa Carragher, Suori Murphy, Haman, Gerard, Barros, Jufan Owen. And Man City's was Smeichel, Sean Wright Phillips, <coughs> Nicholas Jensen, David Sommeil, is that how you say it? Sommeil? Sommeil. Sommeil, yeah. Uh, Richard Dunn, Sylvan Diston, Ali Banabia, <laughs> uh, Joey Barton, Nicholas Anelka, Robbie Fowler and Kevin Herlock. So, you know, it's been a while. Uh, yeah. There's also all other little things kicking around, you know, and again, someone will probably put in the comments, tempting fate, Robbo and all that, but Aguero's not scored at Anfield. No, mate. <laughs> mate, come on, you better than that. Come on, come on, he start us off. Uh, City, how are you feeling about it? I'm still pretty confident. I think you know, we haven't won in a few games, have we? And that's probably surprised us a little bit. But then, if you look at it in context, the Chelsea game at home, the League Cup, Different team. Different team. I think the Chelsea game away, there's no doubt in my mind, I haven't watched it back, but even while watching it live, Liverpool for me would be the better team on the night. And we could easily have come away with a win there. 
but we get a point, and I think everyone, broadly speaking, is taking right, a point yeah. at Stamford Bridge. And then I think sometimes after you've had two huge games like we have had, even though you know he's changed the team a little bit, it's hard to go again. I think when you've got the City game on the horizon and minds start to switch, understandably, to that big game on the Sunday, because I think players, manager, fans, we all realise this is a huge opportunity in the league this season. No doubt about it. So, whilst I was disappointed with the Napoli game, I could understand it a little bit. Um, I actually think maybe the manager could have freshened it up a little bit and maybe that would have helped. But listen, it's easy in hindsight to start saying stuff like that. So, I'm going into it, Robbo, still fairly confident because I think you mentioned about getting into players' heads there and I've listened to people like Vincent Company in the past talk about the Anfield crowd. Yeah, it's noisy, won't affect us. It must affect them. It must be affecting them because they're still banging on about it now and talking about this this bus, God rest his soul, that you have to think it's gone into the heads they've of only the won. manager, they've only won. of it's the players. Nice yeah, I mean, I think you know, since... They had all the money coming to the club. You know, they've, ne- they've never, you've mentioned it there, the 2003 game, they've not been able to come to Anfield and get anything. Mm. And that's that's bonkers when you think about some of the players they've had, the squads, uh, the current side they've got now. Um, so sometimes in football, you have these things where, you know, sides just don't like playing against certain teams. And at the minute, it's been like that for City when they come to Anfield. Obviously, they've got a side pack with quality. So I think we can expect another outstanding game of football to go along the ones we saw last season so sometimes these games are just toss of a coin stuff isn't it it can be you know who, who kind of gets the look of the, the bounce on the day is it refereeing decisions you know when it's this high quality it is really really small mar- margins but I have to say you know at home you've got a fancy Liverpool against most teams and Dan um, you know obviously we talked about on the post-match pints and earlier on in this show about you know, Liverpool sort of lacking a bit of spark against Napoli, obviously. And, you know, as as the analysis is moving on and the conversation's <coughs> moving on, there's a lot of talk about the midfield and about a lot of a lack of dynamism from the midfield. It seems that Kite is going to be OK. He's being given the all clear. He's travelled back. He could be an option now, it seems. But nevertheless, I mean, you know, the, the three that we saw on the pitch there, there is talk that there wasn't enough creativity from those three. There's not a lot of sideways passes and all that kind of thing. Is there an argument, and I've seen some people making it today, so I'm interested in what you've got to say about it. Is there an argument, or is it too bold to say Shakiri in a deeper role? I've thought about it. I thought the kite of one was funny because the way in which he goes down, he's took off by a stretcher. You automatically think he's ruled out. Now, the beginning of the week, I was thinking play him against City because all the time I'm thinking, if you want anything, you want this... Alex Oxley chamberlain clone, or as close you can get to it, that basically stands goal side of Fernandinho and just makes him turn round or he runs at him. And Oxley chamberlain in the games against them last season was brilliant for that. Yeah. He was really good at unsettling them <clears> and getting it there back four. So initially I thought Kaita, now last night I thought he was out, and I'm thinking maybe Shakiri can can do that job. He's been a little bit ill-disciplined tactically, I, I think, but he's still getting used to it. I'm not I'm not slating him for it. Um, so I think there's an argument. I think there's definitely an argument for it. I think I think we'd be foolish to to rush in and criticise Henderson, Milner, Wijnaldum. I think they've been one of the bright sparks of the yeah. opening of the season. And I think there's, there's been times where we've needed them to, to create something or to get us through a game. And I think they have, along with the centre-halves, been, and the goalkeeper been the bright spark up to now. So... I'd be I'd be low to, to to write them off for a cancer just because of last night because they have an off night. Absolutely, loads of factors go wrong last night, and and as a result of it, we're very disjointed. But I think what you what 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 interests me about this game is that Klopp and Guardiola seem to have these encounters, especially last season in the last three games of last season that they play each other, where it's almost as opposed to a ninety minute game, it's almost a game that's played in three thirds. And it's almost as if the managers are preparing the side for what they're, they're going to play in. So we've seen the games at Anfield and at City in the, in the second leg where Liverpool, basically the games at Anfield, Liverpool say we're going to blow these away in the first third or we're going to try and do it in the second third and then the third third we'll try and see it out. In the, in the City game away, they play in the, thir- the final third of the game and they, they choose that moment to play in. So if 
Liverpool decide that they want to go with that approach again and they want to get at City from the first minute, you might well see someone like Shaqiri in that in that midfield role because they'll want to try and unsettle yeah. City and get at them. And I think just on last night and going into the game, I think they could be a, they could be a lot more foolish than to in the first twenty minutes just clip some balls into the channels and do what they've done against them last season. Clip a few in the channel, try and get more money, turning them round because you've still got that that couple of um, whoever plays left back and Otamendi on that yeah. left side, and you can get at them through there. I think just on that one there, Klopp was at pains to say that he he thought the midfield had an impossible job against Napoli because yeah. the, the setup of the team in terms of how the game unfolded, the players weren't where they should have been, and I think he was at pains to say, you know. The midfield struggled tonight, but actually it wasn't all down to them being poor. There was other factors involved. And I just think whilst I, I get the arguments and, and the conversation around maybe bringing Shakiri in, Kaita possibly, I just think for the game of this magnitude, he will default back to what he knows best and what he trusts. And for these big games where you're going to come under period of pressure and you've maybe not got to be as creative because you're not trying to break a team down because there are gaps because they will attack you as well. I think he will go with his, with his three that he that he trusts and that he's played in some of these big matches in the past. I mean, just to finish on on a bit of City news, I mean, when we're recording this, obviously, it may have been overtaken by the time you're actually watching it, but Benjamin Menzi was left out of the, fr- the France squad um, and he's, he's, he's a doubt. He's not featured since uh, the start of September. Uh, Zinchenko could be forced in at left-back because Delft's also believed to be having problems. Yeah. Uh, Gundogan, um, I obviously say his name, I'm really fast at names, aren't I? I need to get better, better at that. Uh, he's likely to be missing as well. Um, hamstring injury during Tuesday's match. Obviously, De Bruyne is out as well. Um, these is he done? Is he done? Is he done? He God. Is. <laughs> I would not be surprised if he turns up in that team. Yeah, I think he'd be on the bench. I think he's their first sub on 60, but it wouldn't surprise me if he's in that lineup. honestly. He's been in training for a week. Mm. He's supposed I, to be out for six weeks, but I, I think I think I'd only give a start. Look, I think the intensities would probably mean he wouldn't start. But I take your point about the bench, though. I think Liverpool have got to prepare for what City tried to do last season with David Silva and Leroy Sane, and it was that it was either that booming diagonal or that little ball inside Trent. And what Trent done really well last season against them was he let Sane cheat. Now it's risky, but Klopp's he's played it before. It's worked. Liverpool have got to be on that, and those two players will play. I think Bernardo Silva will play the other side um, and, and we'll go from there. And I th- but I think, like Ian touches on, there's a, there's a mentality thing that Man City have to get over when playing in Liverpool and it feels like they're already building it up to be something. That... Well, we've seen it, didn't we? It got mentioned earlier on, but you've seen it in that Amazon Prime documentary, you know, them talking about the front three. That, you know, again, it feels like to an extent at least we're in their heads about our team, about what they're capable of. I just wanted to, uh, I did say that was going to be the final point, but there's one more thing because this made me laugh today. Uh, I mean, the Manchester Evening News does publish some crap, it's fair to say. I don't think I'm uh, pushing the boat out by saying that, uh, Mr. Luckhurst, hello. Um, but this wasn't written by him. Um, but he said, but in the Manchester Evening News today, is this, is, are these sentences, much of Liverpool's success last season was down to an incredible front three who all contributed to a sensational season. However, their midfield continues to be their weak link on Wednesday night, James Milner looked leggy and lost, while Van Alden was chasing shadows throughout the evening. Quite frankly, not one of Liverpool's midfielders would get into the City squad. That should highlight the advantage City have got going into the weekend. Guardiola needs to play to his midfield strength, who even without the Bruyne can show just how good they are. Um, I mean, let's hope that kind of cockiness is reflected in how they, they come out on the pitch. But any, any thoughts on the MEN's assessment there, <laughs> Doesn't surprise me that they have to say, you know what I mean? I mean, you touched like on some it. Part of that, wasn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't really pay much attention to that because it's complete as a shite, to be fair. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I can't dress up any other way, Dan. I won't lie to you. The, the, the only thing I'll add is that I think we talked a little bit on the Anfield rap about Mo Salah needing to score a Mo Salah goal. What, what defines as his goal, you know, cutting in from the right, bending in the top corner. I think now you're looking at a situation where the front three need to score a front three goal. And I think City, in many ways, is the perfect opponent for that. If you look at the goals we scored against them last season, either a, a, counter, a counter-attack from deep or you nick the ball off them, you, you press high, you nick the ball, you turn them around and you score. I think if they get a front three goal in a game like this, I think it might just spark them into life. And 
the midfield will take care of itself. These two teams back themselves, don't they? So, the, mm. so they, they'll attack each other, and that's what makes for a for an unbelievable football match. I mean, the point there about the midfield. That's not how football works, though, is it? You know, just because you can say, and you could say, yeah, you know, would Henderson get into City's team? Would one them? Yeah, you can make cases for that. Of course, you can, because they've got a, a, an unbelievable football mm. side. But we've proven in the past that doesn't necessarily mean Liverpool can't beat them on any given day. And then you can have conversations around people like our front three versus theirs, and you could go on about it all day. But ultimately, you're talking about fine margins. Two brilliant football teams going head to head. It should make for one unbelievable contest on Sunday afternoon. Well, let's hope so. Uh, Liverpool have beat them the last three times. Let's hope they can make it four. Uh, that would certainly uh, put all the negativity that seems to be floating about now to bed. Uh, we're open for a great weekend. Whatever happens, the Anfield, Anfield app will be there. We'll be covering it. Social media, on the website, on the podcasts, on the video. It's all going to be happening. Hopefully, Liverpool are happening too. That has been a slightly chaotic preview show, not least because of my pronunciations. Uh, look forward to your comments up there. Let's... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.